The law of reflections plays a significant role in our everyday lives. For example, we use mirrors almost on a daily basis. And of course, also in technology, especially for optical instruments, such as cameras, microscopes, telescopes, and industrial machinery, which uses imaging for quality control and automation of processes. And so let's um, discuss the three main types of, uh, the two main types of mirrors, flat mirrors and curved mirrors, and see how the law of reflection is applied in those instances to form images. First, we are going to discuss um, images produced by flat mirrors. So the general rule is that in order to see the reflection from any mirror, the reflected light uh, rays must enter the eyes of the observer. We discussed that already when we talked about the law of reflection, and we said that in order to see an object, we must uh, be in a position so that the reflected light from that object enters our eyes. Here is a schematic um, representing how reflections are formed um, of an image, oh, I'm sorry, of an object. So we have an object located at point P here in front of a flat mirror. And so let's say that we have two light rays that start from the object, one that ends at point D on the mirror and the other one that ends at point A on the mirror. So upon reflection, the first ray starts from P and upon reflection reflects from D and goes towards point E. And the second ray starts from P, it reflects at A and then you know, um, propagates towards B. So if there is an observer at point E or at point B, they will be able to observe the light reflection from the mirror, but for them it will look as if the light is coming from point Q, which is behind the mirror. And so they are seeing the image of point P as if it's coming from an object at point Q. But the important part is that if any of those two observers was not in the way of the reflected rays here or here, they would never see the image of P behind the mirror. So they will never see that image Q right here. Let's discuss real quick how an image is formed of an object placed in front of a um, flat mirror. So this is the mirror. The front surface is the glass of the mirror and the back surface here is the reflective part of the mirror. So for example, silver coating or other reflective coating. And we place an object in front of the mirror and the distance between the object and the mirror is going to be labeled with D. For simplicity, let's look at two light rays which are emitted by the object, more specifically the point of the object. Rather, let's look at a light ray that's emitted at the tip of the object and one that's emitted from the bottom of the object. So here is the ray emitted by at the tip, from the tip of the object, it is incident upon the mirror, so now it is going to reflect from the mirror and it's going to obey, the reflection is going to obey the law of reflections. Here is the normal to the surface and here is the reflected light ray. Now let's look at a ray that starts from the bottom of the object. This ray is going to reflect from the mirror, obeying the law of reflection. Again, here is the normal to the surface. This is the reflected light ray. And so the two light rays will intersect somewhere here in front of the mirror. So if 
we place an observer right here at this point, they will see those two light rays. And now the question is, what would they actually see as far as the image of this object is concerned and the flat mirror? For the observer, it would appear as if the light rays are coming from behind the mirror, like so and like so. And of course, if I consider all the light rays that come from the object and reflect from the mirror and continue them behind the mirror just the same way I did with those two specific rays, then I can build the image of the object And for the observer right here, it will look as if the object is actually located behind the mirror, which we know that it's physically impossible since this here is a reflective surface. It's not transparent. Furthermore, it turns out that the distance from the image to the mirror is also equal to D. So it's the same distance as the distance from the object to the mirror. And one more thing is also true, and that is that the size of the object is equal to the size of the image. So the image produced by a flat mirror is not um, magnified in any way. So to summarize, the image is the same size as the object, the image is the same distance from the mirror as the object. And the image is virtual, which means that it is behind the mirror. So virtual. And here is a um, cartoon of an image formation of a pencil that is placed in front of a flat mirror. And here is the image. To the observer, it appears as if the image is behind the mirror, but we know that the mirror is not transparent for light, so therefore the image is not behind the mirror. And so therefore the image is virtual. One more thing to note is that even if the object, the pencil, is moved to the side of the mirror, as long as the observer has a position that is at the correct angles with the image, they will be able to observe uh, with the uh, object, they will be able to observe the image of that object from the mirror. So that means that if you are looking at somebody in a mirror and you can see them, that means that they can see you as well, even though they may not be anywhere close to the mirror in a um, significant or obvious uh, position. And this is a principle that is used in applications such as rear view mirrors or the mirrors on the side of the car and so on and so forth.